Hello everyone, I'm Alicia. So, remember I just recently filmed a video on some crystals that I bought from Crystals and Beads for Friends. Well, this is what I'm doing with those crystals. Um, these earrings right here are ice cream cones, crystal ice cream cones. This is the Isabel color that I bought from them, and the rose is right there. And the cupcakes, these colors here I also bought from them, but in the past. Um, I think it was a pink opal. And this um, topaz. And that is my crystal cupcake. So, a little bit of how I designed this, because I always get asked, how do I come up with designing my jewelry? So do you guys remember I did, for Christmas, a beaded snowman? I was addicted to making this little guy. He took a long time to make, but man, was he worth it. And he has all the details of a real snowman. He's so cool. So anyways, when I was designing this snowman and I was making him, um... I realized that after I made his big ball, his middle ball for the tor torso, and his neck, when I was holding it like this, not looking at all that, I kind of thought it looked like an ice cream cone. And so, I, or I just looked at it for a little bit and I'm like, I think I could probably do a beaded ice cream cone. So I just made a note, I wrote down to try it, I have a thing where I make notes on things that I would like to try, and um... So I did. I sat down and I tried it and it worked instantly. I figured out how to make a beaded ice cream cone. And then I thought I should do a beaded cupcake because I've always wanted to design my own beaded cupcake. And I did and it turned out awesome. So this here was the very first cupcake I made. I wanted to do it in a big one because, I don't know, I actually just wanted to have this sitting out on my desk. I like having cute things to look at when I'm making jewelry. And um, I was not going to put a top on it, but I realized maybe I should put a top on it. What if I want to put it on my purse as a keychain or something? So I put a loop there in the top. And this is made with all plastic beads that I've gotten from all different places. This one here I did make differently. This cupcake compared to all the other ones. I put a large bead right here in the base. I call this the stump of the cupcake just to keep its shape because it's so big I had to fill that hole in but um this is hollow in the top there's nothing in there it's just all these beads that are keeping it like this and look how hard it is it's pretty hard so the white beads were sent to me by a viewer and she also sent me these uh, colored ones here that I used for the cherry and for the um, sprinkles her name was Rosanna I did a little haul and stuff that she gave me before. And after I made that one, I wanted to see what it would be like with smaller beads. So these were faceted plastic, so I did a faceted round. So I did check fire polish beads. And these here are from the Dollar Bead Box, and you guys might have this. It's a really pretty pink color, and these here I thought looked just like cake. Their color, so they had the little specks in it. Looks like a pecan cake or something, so I did that. And I noticed that this one, because of how the bead shape, has a very large top. And I used a 6mm check fire polish bead for the top, and that was the only one I had in that color. So that was an oddball bead that I was happy to use up for um, this. So this is a little pendant. This one's kind of keychain size. This is done with 6mm. This is done with 4 and after I did this one, I wanted to do it with crystals. So I went and I bought some crystals, and I did it with the crystals. And I made these, and they are so flippin' adorable. They're so sparkly. Um, that's a 6 millimeter Swarovski bead. I only had four of those in my entire stash. So two I used for the cupcakes, and two I used for the ice cream cones. It's really weird when I make jewelry how numbers like that work out. I need, when I need something I have the exact amount sometimes. It's so weird. So um, after I made those I wanted to do it with 60 seed beads. And so I made these and oh my gosh do I love these to death. They are so cute. These earrings findings here were sent to me by Lisa, again another viewer, and wow they are just stunning. They're so cute. Um, these here I think were Toho and Miyuki. 
I don't know, my tube didn't say. It just said that there are Japanese sea beads. This was a color that's called chocolate, and this was, I believe it's called beige, this cream color, and I love this cream color. And again, those there are chocolate, and I did my little six millimeter cherry on top, and they are just so darn cute. I love them so much. And then after I did these, I was looking at it, and I kind of thought it looked like a mushroom. My cupcakes, they look like cupcakes, but if I change the color, it looks like a mushroom. So remember the mushroom on Super Mario Brothers? It's a red and white mushroom. So I made my cupcake look like a mushroom. And uh, I showed these to my brother and he loves them. He thinks they're pretty cool. And actually, he sat down and made one with me. So he made one of these. Don't, don't know which one he made, but um, yeah, he made one. And uh, they're just so cool. So uh, just like with my snowman, how when I did that video, I told you guys that if you put... The pumpkin head on it that I showed, I made a beaded pumpkin head, on the snowman you can have um, a snow golem which is from Minecraft. So with this, if you are a video game person or you know someone that likes to play video games, you can make them the little mushroom from Super Mario Brothers. It's so cute. And this one here, the bottom, the white I did with Vintage Venetian. 6 seed beads because that's what I had and I've noticed working with vintage Venetian seed beads that they are a little smaller comparing them to other beads so these 6 O's I feel are a little bit smaller than these here so I would kind of say that they're more of a 7 O. and then I did check these are check um, 6 O's, and these ones right here are 8 O's. okay because I needed my polka dots of my mushroom to be sunken in and then I did a 6-0 in the center and I did a silver beads there for the loop so you, it didn't blend in with the rest so next thing I made was these here I really love the first one I did with the sprinkles and I wanted to do it again with the sprinkles and I will be showing you how to make this one in the video because I really want to show you guys how to do the sprinkle look so the bottom of this one is made with transparent brown uh, check seed beads They're six O's and the white is the vintage Venetian and again the vintage Venetian I'm noticing that all of their beads that I bought from them are just slightly smaller than the Miyuki and the Toho's so if you compare these Cupcakes These here are I think Toho's maybe Miyuki Toho or Miyuki I'm not sure because like I said it didn't say which one it was in a bottle on a tube, but um, do you see that this cupcake is a little bit smaller? It's because this is done with vintage Venetian in the white. So, anyways, for the sprinkles, I did 80 seed beads because I wanted them to be recessed into the cupcake. So, you can do this so many different ways. You can do this in all 60 seed beads. Or you can do some Eidos in there for the sprinkles. It's up to you. And as you can see, you can play around with all different kinds of beads. I've used 6 millimeter rounds. I've used 4 millimeter bicones. 4 millimeter check fire polish beads. I've used 6 O seed beads. I put some Eidos in there for the sprinkles. There's just so many different ways you can do this. I'm going to show you guys how to make the cupcake today. Sorry if the beginning seems long, but I just wanted to give you an overview of everything here so you didn't have any questions to ask. And um, my next video, I will show you how to make this into a ice cream cone. And over here, this ice cream cone, I am so happy with. First, I made these two here. And I thought, man, wouldn't it be cool if I could do a triple decker ice cream cone? And so I did. And after I made it, you know, I did it with all colors, I realized I should have put chocolate syrup on the top. So I took it apart and I put chocolate syrup on the top of my triple decker ice cream cone because just three scoops of ice cream wasn't enough. I had to put chocolate on it and then a cherry on top to really um, knock your socks off. So this is a pendant. And I think I might hang this on a long chain or I'll put it on one of those silk cords I get from the dollar bead box. I just think that's so cool. It's really cool. I love it so much. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to do the cupcake and look out for my next tutorial. I will show you how to do the ice cream cone in that one. 
So for the list of materials, you can use different kinds of stringing material for this. I used monofilament for the mushrooms for this big one here. I used for these, um, this bead stringing wire. I used fire line for the bicone crystals. So you can use, you know, different kinds of string materials. But the thing is, um, you will need to cut three feet to make one cupcake. So if you're doing a pair of earrings, you'll have to cut two three-foot pieces. Um, if you're doing monofilament, which is the you know clear fishing line, you will have to knot. You'll have to tie knots. And that's what I did in these. And I wanted to make a whole bunch of these, so I didn't want to tie a knot in every single one of these. And I like to tie more than one knot to make it very durable. So I started trying it with bead stringing wire so I can crimp it. And I really like doing it with this. It's my favorite way because I feel like it makes them faster to make. So um, if you're doing the monofilm, you have to knot it. If you're doing it with bead stringing wire, you have to use crimps. And if you're doing it with fire line, you will have to put a bead in the top of your cupcake to keep it from collapsing because fire line is thread. It's soft, right? Well, monofilament and bead stringing wire is stiff, so it keeps a nice shape, a 3D shape. So all of these here are fine. There is no bead in the top to keep it from collapsing. It's nice and hard. But these here I did with fire line, and I had to use fire line for the bicones because their holes were so small, and I couldn't... I tried it with monofilament, and this one, it wouldn't work. I had to use fire line for the bicones, so I had to put a bead in the top of the cupcake, and I discovered that it was best to put a rondelle bead on top of the cupcake because the cupcake isn't actually perfectly round. Because of how I make it, it kind of has that rondelle shape, a squished ball shape. So rondelles worked best for those. And it does not matter what color rondelle you put in it because you cannot see the bead on the inside. I actually put a clear, a transparent pink one in there, but I, I realized after I did it that I didn't have to because you can't even tell what color the bead is on the inside. So that's just some things to keep in mind. So again, you will need to cut three feet to make one cupcake of whatever stringing material you want to use. And you're going to need beads. And like I said, you can use different kinds of beads. I'm using 6-0 seed beads. You can use 8-0 seed beads. You can use 4mm uh, check fire polish beads, rounds, bicones. Um, I did six millimeter on this. You could even do eight millimeter beads. There's so many different things you could do with this. So for the top of the cupcake, I counted, and you will need 42 beads for the top of the cupcake. Now I'm doing sprinkles on mine, so um, 12 of the beads on the top will be my sprinkles. So if you're doing sprinkles, pick three colors that you like together. I have turquoise, orange, and green and you'll need four of each bead to have the sprinkles look random so the colors aren't um, next to each other. So you'll need three colors and four of each color and these are eight O's but you don't have to do eight you can do all six O's. For the bottom of my cupcake which I like to call the stump I have 19 beads and these are six O check seed beads. And you'll also need a bead for the cherry. I'm using a six millimeter truck, but you can use whatever six millimeter red bead you have. And if you don't have six millimeter, you probably could use an eight or seven millimeter bead. You're also going to need 11 OC beads. This is for the top loop of the cupcake. And for me, I am using a crimp because I'm using this in the video bead stringing wire, but if you're not using this and you're using um, fire line, you'll have to tie knots. And you can't really use crimps with fire line, or not fire line, with fishing line, because it will um, cut it. So you'll have to tie knots if you're doing that. Okay, so this is the list of material. And it might sound confusing, and I'm going to put everything down there below the video. And please look down there, because I'm going to have notes and things I didn't mention in this down there in the description bar. So make sure you go down there and read my notes and little things that I didn't mention in the video. So this is the size of the bead stringing wire I'm using. It is .010, and this is the best size for doing weaving like this. Now, 
working with this, you have to be careful that you don't kink it because if you do, it could break on you. So I'm going to start by picking up six of my frosting beads. There's five, or four or five, and then I'm going to pick up my sixth one and I'm going to crisscross my ends through this, put them together, make sure they are even, and bring this center bead down until we have a circle of six beads. And then, because I'm right-handed, I'm going to pick up four beads with my right hand and crisscross through the fourth bead. Okay? Now when we bring this down, we're going to have a circle of five. See that? This is the one we just made and this was the first one we made. Now the circle of six is the very top center of our cupcake. So if you look at this one from the top you can see right below the cherry we have a circle of six beads there. So when you pull this tight See how this wire is going nowhere? This is our pickup wire. This wire here is actually pointing at that bead. So we need to take this wire and pass through this bead. Now this here is where you can get a kink at when you're working with this wire. So what I do is I just make sure that it doesn't kink. See it like that? Nice and smoothly it went through that hole. Now I'm ready to continue. So this side here is the wire I'm going to be picking up beads with the side that has the circle of five. So right now I'm Xing out of two beads and I need another circle of five. So I have to pick up three this time. Earlier I picked up four. So there's two and three. I'm going to crisscross through that bead and now I have this. So when you pull it tight, this wire is going towards this bead and this one is going nowhere. This is our pickup string. So take this wire and pass through this bead right here. And again, be careful that it doesn't kink, just like that. And with this one here, not the one that's coming out of the circle of six, I'm going to pick up three. So I'm going to repeat what I just did again crisscross through the third one and bring it down. Now I have what looks like this. I'm going to take this string and pass through this bead. Just like that. Now I have to take this string and pick up beads. So this one here is still coming out of that circle of six where our center cherry will be. This one I have to take and pick up three six o seed beads. Okay, and then crisscross through the third one. Bring it down. And now I have what looks like this. So when you pull this tight, this one here is leading nowhere. That's our string for picking up beads. This one here is pointing at this bead, which means we have to go through that one. Okay. Oops. Pull through. Careful it doesn't kink. Just like that. This one here, I'm going to take that and pick up three beads again and crisscross through the third one. Bring it down. So now we're at the close of this, of the top of our cupcake. So when I pull this, this wire is pointing at this bead. So we're also going to be going through this bead, okay? Because we did one, two, three, four, five groups of the five circles around the center one there. So I'm going to take this string and go through this one and that one. Okay, through here and through here. And again, I have to be careful it doesn't loosen, or not, not that word, that's not the word I meant. I have to be careful it doesn't kink. So see how this here loosened up? Let that happen. And then you pull that string there. See how that went? No kinks. 
Okay, now I'm going to pick up two more frosting beads and I'm going to crisscross through the second one. I already have three there, by the way, that I'm Xing out of, so that's why I picked up two. Because when I do that, it gives me a circle of five. So now you want to make sure this is pulled really tight. We are now going on to the stump, what I like to call the stump of the cupcake. So when you pull this tight, this wire here is going up. That's our pickup wire. This one here is pointing at this bead. So I'm going to take this wire and go through this one. Just like that. Now I'm going to take this one right here. Okay, the one I was just telling you about. Not the one I passed through that bead with. I'm going to take this one and I'm going to pick up one white bead or one of my frosting beads, one of my stump beads, which is my chocolate there, and one more of my frosting bead. Crisscross to that third bead. Pull it tight. And as you can see, it's starting to curve down now. Okay, so when I pull this, this wire is going nowhere. This is our pickup string. And this one is pointing at that bead. So I'm going to take this wire and go through these two. Okay, because I'm going to be making another circle. So when I pull that, it should look like this. Now I have to take this wire that is beside this brown. I'm going to pick up the same color as my stump. So this is my stump color. And then my frosting. So I'm picking up two. And I'm crossing through the second bead. Pulling the ends. This is what we have now. Okay, so now pulling it tight, again, this wire has to go through these two here. So I'm going to do that. And again, I have to pick up two beads. So again, with this wire that's on the side, with the brown beads, I'm going to pick up one brown one white and cross through the second bead that I picked up. Pull it tight. Okay, so now I have three brown or three of the stump color, whatever color you're using for the bottom of your cupcake. Now I have to take this wire, okay, and pass through these two beads. Just like that. Take this one again that's with the brown. Pick up one of my stump color, one of the frosting. Crisscross to the second one, bring it down. Now I have what looks like this. Okay. So again, I have to repeat the same thing I've been doing. I have to take this wire and go through these two. careful not to kink it and this is what we have again I'm going to take this wire that's on the side with my stump colors and pick up one of my stump beads and one of my frosting and crisscross through that frosting bead okay so I have five brown beads for my stump on the bottom there I need a total of six I'm now here at the close so what I have to do is take this wire, okay, that's pointing down into the frosting, and I'm going to go through three beads, and I'm going to try to do all three of them at one shot, because with this wire, it's best to go through as many as you can at one time, because it prevents kinking. So I just went through these three here, pulling it through, just like that, perfect. So now these two wires are exiting out of these four six o beads that are my frosting. So now I have to close up the top of my cupcake. I'm going to pick up one of my stump beads, crisscross through it, and pull it tight. 
pull it very tight and stand these beads up so the um, everything is sitting properly so just like that so how they stand up looks pretty darn good now I'm going to continue on with the stump so I'm going to take one of my wires it does not matter which I'm right handed so I always go for the right one and I'm going to pick up three of my stump colors so that's three brown I'm going to crisscross through the third one and bring it down just like that then I have to take this wire and pass through that brown bead right there okay so now I have this I'm going to take this wire pick up two brown because now I'm doing um, groups of four beads that are together so picking up two crossing through the second one so if you look here there's four beads right there okay right now I'm exiting out of these two. I just added two more, so when I pull it, there's another group of four. And of course, they are sharing one. So now I have to take this wire and pass through the next bead. So when I pull this like that, see how this wire's pointing down? I have to go through that brown bead right there. So through there. and pull it snug as you go because you don't want it to be really loose okay and I'm gonna pick up two again and crisscross through the second one bring it down and you might need tweezers for this I forgot to mention that sometimes I had to use them sometimes I was fine without them okay so pulling that down I have to take this wire and pass through the next brown bead just like that okay picking up two again crisscrossing through the second one those two I just brought down I have to take this wire and go through that brown bead right there This is why I told you to stand those brown ones up so they're easy to pass through because they kind of want to lay over. Okay, now I'm through these two. Pull tight. I'm going to pick up two brown beads again. Cross to the second one. Bring it down. Okay, so bringing that down. And now I have to take this wire and pass through that brown bead and through that one because we're at the close, at the bottom of this. And if I can, I'll go through both beads at the same time. So just like that. See that right there? Passing through those two. Careful I don't get any kinks. Okay. And that is how you want it to look just like that we're going through three beads that's what the bottom looks like okay I have to pick up one six zero and crisscross through that just one to close that now pull everything tight and go in there and stand up the beads see how they're leaning over just go like that stand them up and pull it tight it makes it very clean and uh, tidy. The beads sit just in the right place. So, see how good it looks? Okay, so now what I have to do to close up the bottom of my stump, I have to take one of my wires, the longer one, see this one here? This one's longer, and I'm going to close up the bottom. So I'm coming out this side. So I'm gonna go through these two beads here, right next to it, See that right there? I'm coming out of here. I'm going through these two. We're just going to make a circle and bring all of these beads together. So I went through two again. Careful it doesn't kink. And then through 
these two. Again, don't let it twist. Okay, and now I have to go through just one more. So if you're doing this with bicone crystals, right now is the time. Of course, you should already have your um, rondelle bead inside the top of the cupcake. But um, right now is the time to put your head pin in. Your head pin would just go straight down through this hole into the rondelle, come out this hole. And then we would put this bead here, which would keep the pin from coming out the head pin. Okay, so pull this tight. And I'll show you. See how good that looks? Looks really good. Okay. Now I'm going to fill in the hole. Picking up a 6-0. My last one. Crossing through that. Bring it down. See that right there? Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pass through these two on this side. I'm skipping over this one and this one. And I found it best to do this with all the bottoms except for this one, which I had to put a really big bead in there to keep that um, from collapsing. But that's just because this was such a huge cupcake. That's why I had to do that. Okay, so see this here? Sliding that down, taking one of these wires, and passing through the two beads over here. Don't let it kink. I'm just skipping over this one. Okay, and then I'm going to turn this around, taking this wire, and I'm going to pass through just one bead. Okay, and then bring this down, pull it tight. Now this bead will stick out just a little bit and all you have to do to fix that is push it in just like that. Push it in and then pull it tight and it stays. It really does. Now I have to reposition my ends up to the top so we can add our sprinkles. So to do that I might need tweezers. But I'm going to see how it goes without it. Okay, so I'm going to take this wire on my right side, and I'm going to go up through this brown bead. Again, make sure it does not twist and kink on you. And then I'm going to go this way, through the brown bead there. And right here is usually where it always wants to kink, in that spot. See that? Okay, got through there without kinking. And now I'm going to go up through two white beads. So I'm coming out of that brown. If you come in at an angle like this, it's easier to get into the bead that you need to go through. Okay? And if I can, I'll go through two of them at one time. Let's see. Okay, I did it. With this bead trimming wire, it's always best to go through as many as you can at one time because it prevents it from kinking. Okay, pulling this through. That's good. Now I'm going to go to my other wire and do the same exact thing. Through here. I'll twist that. I need to make sure this is tight because it's not tight. That bead in the bottom is popping out. It's loosening up on me. Now I'm going to go through this bead just like we did earlier. Again, don't let it kink. Okay. Then turning it, I have to go through these two white just like that yep again don't want that kink okay pull it tight now I'm going to take one of my wires I'll take the longer one and pass through a white bead like that so that both of our ends are exiting out of the same white bead just like this so it doesn't matter which side you do 
you just want to take the longer string and go through the white beads so both of your ends are xing out of one white bead just like this so now we have the cupcake complete we just have to add the sprinkles into the little holes so this is what we have so far so the sprinkles are surprisingly easy when I first started doing it with the sprinkles I thought this is going to be confusing trying to make sure that you know the same colors aren't next to each other but actually it's extremely easy so what I'm going to do is pull this tight, both ends. I'm going to hold on to one end and take the other one, and I'm going to work with that. I'm going to pick up one of my sprinkle colors. does not matter what color. I got the green one. Okay. I'm exiting out of this bead right here, and I need to put my bead into that hole. So I'm going to come around and go through this bead. When I do that, it causes my 8 to pop right there in that hole. So now I have to come over here. Okay? I can't put one on this side because I'm actually on this side. And I would have to cross over those wires to do that. So I'm going to get this wire here out of my way. Okay? I just add that green one. I'm going to put one here. I got the wrong wire. This one goes up here, and this one comes down here. See that? Xing out of that bead. So I'm going to pick up one of these. Doesn't matter what color at this point. It does not matter. I got the turquoise one. I'm going to pass through this bead. So when I pull it, see how it pops into place? Make sure you pull it tight each time after you do that. Okay, I'm going to continue going now. Now I'm going to do an orange, because that's my third color that I have to do. I already did blue and green. And I'm going to pass through this bead. So when I pull it, it sits there. Okay. Now, what color do I do next? Well, there is a turquoise and an orange here. That means I have to do green, because green is all the way over there. So I'm going to do a green and pass through this white bead like that pops into place so we're actually zigzagging through the center beads right here adding these sprinkles so now I'm going to add another bead and here is orange and green so that means I have to do the turquoise because it's all over here and I'm going to pass through that bead right there and pop that into place now I do have to make sure that I don't run out of thread. Let's see, I've done five beads. Let's do another one. Okay, coming out of this bead, I have my green and turquoise. I'm going to do an orange. Coming out of here, I'm going to go through this one. Pop that into place. Now I'm going to stop with this thread and go to this one because we don't want to run out of string on one side. So this one right now I am by a green and a turquoise so that means I have to pick up an orange. Got my orange, I'm coming out of this bead, I'm gonna zigzag and go through this one. Pop that in place, turn it. Okay, so now I have to pick up a turquoise because there is green and orange. Passing down through this bead. Okay, the next color is going to be green because there's turquoise and orange. Going up through this bead here. Okay, let's see which one's longer. This one's longer, so I'll keep using this one. So there's turquoise and green. Now I'm going to do orange. I'm going to go down through this bead. Okay. And then my next color is going to be turquoise because there's my green and orange. Pull that through. 
Now pull both of the wires tight. We have one sprinkle left to put in, so I'm going to see which one is longer and take the longer one. I'm going to pick up my last sprinkle, which is going to be my green. And see that there? Putting this in, looking over here, there's orange turquoise. There's the green I just added, orange and turquoise. So it's perfect all the way around. We don't have colors, the same color next to each other. It has that random look. So I'm passing through that bead right there. And I'm going to pull this tight, as tight as I can. Okay? Now what I have to do, this is what it looks like from the top. And as you can see, orange is straight across, turquoise is straight across, green is straight across. And if you look at the second row, that one's orange. There's orange there. Turquoise, turquoise, green, and green. Worked out great. So now I have to put my cherry on top. And for this one, because I'm using bead stringing wire, I found a special way uh, to do this one. So I have to weave through a few beads because if I don't, that last sprinkle I add will keep coming loose. So I'm going to take this string and pass through this bead here. Don't let it kink. Okay, and then I'm going to pass through another one. And I'll go through one more. Okay, so I'm stopped right here at this orange bead, okay? See how there is one, two, three, four, five white beads there, kind of looks like a flower with an orange center. I'm going to leave this wire here and I'm going to take this one and I'm going to leave out to this orange one right here. Okay, so straight across, I'm going to come over here. So in order to do that, I have to go through this bead. I'm going to zigzag my way back through, through there. And then I have to go down. Okay, and there I am. I'm in the right spot. So now I have to make sure that I pull these tight again. This is my last time to make sure all my sprinkles are tight. Okay, and it looks good. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take this wire and go through this hole right here. And I'm going to go through at an angle so that I come up through the top of my cupcake. Pull that wire through, and I'm gonna do the same over here. Take this wire, go through this hole, and come out through the top of a cupcake. So now both wires should be coming out the top and we are ready to finish this off with my cherry seed beads and a crimp. And for this one, I did a completely different thing. So I was exiting out of a bead that was like right here on this one. What I did is I went up to the very top. So I took one of my strings and I passed through, what is this, three beads, came out here, took my other string, passed through those beads, came out. and um. I took and I was exiting out of one bead, one this way, one that way. So I took one of the strings and I went through the bead beside it. So then my wires were coming out of two beads. And then I picked up a 6 of seed bead, crisscross through it, bring that down. I picked up six 11 of seed beads, crisscross through those. And then I went back through that 6 of seed bead. And then when I came out of that bead, I took one wire, went through that bead and one through that bead so I skipped over two beads kind of like how I did the bottom it's a lot like that and I tied my two um, strings together with a surgeon's knot and I weaved through the rest of the mushroom or cupcake whatever you're making tying knots so I'm going to show you how to finish this one off with the wire okay so I have my cherry bead right here this is a uh, check druck, by the way. And then I have to do my crimp. Mm -hmm. 
pop that on and then I'm going to take and pick up six 11 OC beads. I'm going to do three my beaver earring finding beaver back and three more seed beads slide them down just like this it does not matter which side is the front of my cupcake so doesn't matter how you pick up the earring finding crisscrossing through all of those beads in the finding bringing this down and that, now what I have to do is I have to take this wire pass back through this crimp and through the cherry into my cupcake and I like to come out the same way I went in so right there that's where I came out earlier so I'm gonna go back to that hole and the first one seems like it's easy but the second one it's a little complicated to do so I have to come out straight across from that orange bead I'll be coming out this one you want to try to find the same holes that you used before because if you don't it might not lay properly okay so now I have to come out to find that hole And I think I need to make mine bigger because I can't really see a hole there. Okay, found it. So there I am, one on this side, one on that side. What I'd like to do to make sure it's the right tension is I hold these two wires Okay, then I take an awl, put it in there, I pull the wires tight, and then I carefully slide that down. So now, that's what it should look like, and we are ready to crimp it. So you want to make sure that you can get this as tight as possible, these two wires, because this cherry here that wobbles it, it can wobble a little bit but you just don't want to be able to pull up and see the four wires that are inside there so just make sure they can get as tight as possible and like I said holding the wires here and pulling them helps do that so now I'm going to crimp this and I'm not going to use a crimping plier because I don't think I can get in there without breaking a seed bead so be very careful see how narrow my pliers are I'm just going to pull these wires here just like that and then carefully come in here and crimp that crimp down and just flattening it I want to make sure that I don't break those seed beads because then I would have to restring the whole thing so now all I have to do is trim off my wires get in there close And we're all done it's so cute and they're the perfect earrings to wear to a birthday party or to give to someone on their birthday they're so darn cute so this is it I hope you guys enjoyed this video make sure you check out my beaded ice cream cone video which will be uploaded maybe a day or so after this video Please like this video, leave me a comment, subscribe if you want to see more of my videos, and like me on Facebook. And don't forget to share pictures of the jewelry you've made from my videos on my Facebook page, and follow me on Pinterest. Thanks for watching.